Good morning to you, friend. Welcome back to the Morning Minute Meditation. Thank you for joining me today. Before the Trumps, there were the Wendells. That was the title of the article by the New York Times. John Wendell was a fur trader. At least that was the business he had been in. His father had been in that. And then they wound up in the real estate business and they made an absolute fortune. The Wendells, wanting to keep the wealth inside of the family and not to split it up, decided many of them decided to remain unmarried. John and his his sibling sisters, they all remained unmarried. He instilled frugality in these girls, and they lived with a, 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 without a lot of the amenities that a lot of other folks did, according to one article that I read. In, in regard to the Wendells, when John Wendell died in, in 1915, uh, his sisters, of course, they uh, kept the fortune and they uh, remained frugal as they had been taught uh, until the final sister died. And when, when she died, uh, somewhere around 1931, uh, the family fortune was finally realized to have been in 1931. Uh, at the beginning of, of what we would call the Great Depression, it was $100 million, $100 million. The irony of it all is they lived as a pauper without automobile or electricity or any of the, uh, the amenities of life that were making strides at the time, they were living without. It was said that uh, Ms. Wendell was wearing a dress, still wearing a dress that she had made with her own hands 25 years earlier, and that was the only dress that she had worth $100 million in living without some of the uh, amenities of life that we consider just to be staple for our own lives today. And so here is a very unique story of a person who was not enjoying the wealth that they had. They were not able to use it in such a manner and in such a fashion as to just live a modest life. And that's the way it is for a lot of Christians. The Bible clearly says this, that Jesus Christ has riches that are beyond compare. In 2 Corinthians 8, 9, it said, For we know that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he, was, though he were rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that, he through, that ye through his poverty might be made rich. In other words, uh, Jesus laid down heaven for us, came and gave us eternal life through the sacrifice of himself on the cross, and now has allowed us accesses into the riches of God. Just in the book of Ephesians alone, he said in chapter 1, verse 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. He, he, his coffers of grace are unfathomable. You will never reach the depths of the grace of God. He's rich in grace. Ephesians 2, 4 said, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. He's rich in grace, but he's also rich in mercy. In Ephesians 2, 7, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Jesus Christ. He's rich in kindness toward the people of God. Ephesians 3, 8, unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. We have a message to tell, and that is that our Lord Jesus has allowed those who enter into relationship with him to dip into the unfathomable depths of the riches of Almighty God for their own personal benefit. Ephesians 3.16 said that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. We need to dig into and dive into the depths of the riches of the glory, grace, mercy, and kindness of our God. Hey, consider what I say today and have yourself a great day.